Amen. Amen. How's everybody doing this morning? Amen. Amen. I heard all kinds of good stuff. Blessed. Awesome. Yeah, I've been hit with a little blah, if I'm going to be honest. Uh, just a little, it feels like, um, you know, just some resistance. Amen. And, um, you know, that happens. You're going to meet with some resistance sometimes. And, and it's okay to, you know, I know that every time we walk past each other, hey, how you doing? I'm doing great. Yeah, but we're not always doing great. Amen. Sometimes there's stuff, and it's okay that there's stuff. Sometimes there's resistance, and it's okay. Um, God's with us, and God's walking with us, and so we just need to keep walking through that. It's not by feelings, it's by faith, amen? And so that's what God's called us to walk in. And so I just encourage you today that if you feel a little of the blahs, that um, God has you, and um, you just need to put one foot in front of the other, and he is faithful to take you to that next place, amen? Amen. So we've been talking about preparing for prosperity And we're on part four, and part four is consecrated for increase, amen, consecrated for increase. This is something that God's just been speaking to my heart and and dealing with me about, um, just about how he wants to bless us, but in that blessing, um, there are some things that God, some wisdom that God has for us to walk in, amen, and so we're going to talk a little bit about that today. In this series that we're on, we've established that we were created in Christ Jesus for good works, amen, amen. I just love that. I love saying that, created in Christ Jesus for good works. Um, your life has a purpose, amen? Um, you're, here for per- on re- you're here on purpose for a purpose, amen? And so uh, just get a hold of that because, you know, you're valuable to God. You're valuable to the kingdom of heaven. God has destined you to, com- to, to, to walk with him in such a way, th- and he'll give you assignments as you're walking with him. And so I just think that's so cool. Before we breathed our first breath, there were already good works planned out for us to accomplish. We also discussed God's desire to bless us spiritually and financially so that we can be generous on every occasion. And that, those, that, that passage that we read last week was just so powerful, you know, about the everys and the alls and, uh, you know, this every occasion. God wants us to prosper and be blessed so that we can be generous on every occasion. And that's not a small thing. That's powerful. So we need to trust God and believe God to bless us and to provide for us in such a way that we can be generous on every occasion. We've been blessed to be a blessing. And we believe that God has spoken to us here at Transformation Church that 2022 is the year of open doors, right? This means that new and powerful opportunities will be opening up to us throughout this year. Many people have already experienced that to a degree, but there's a lot more to come. I said, many people have already experienced that to a degree. I've heard you guys coming to me and sharing with me testimonies of God's goodness and God's faithfulness and breakthrough in in, in your lives. God is already moving in 2022. God is already opening doors for us in 2022. And so we just need to continue to walk with Him and prepare our hearts for all the blessings that He has for us in this year. If we honestly believe that God is moving and desiring to bring us into powerful blessings and new opportunities, right? We need to prepare our hearts and minds for what's to come. And so I just want to take a quick look here. Exodus 19, 10, and 11. I'm going to look at two two, uh, scripture verses that talk about consecration, and then we'll get into it a little bit more. But um, Exodus 19, 10, and 11, right, says this, The Lord said to Moses, Go to the people and consecrate them today and tomorrow. And let them wash their garments and be ready for the third day. For on the third day, the Lord will come down on Mount Sinai in the sight of all the people. So here was an amazing opportunity. This was an open door, right? They were going to have this amazing encounter with God. And what did God tell Moses to do? before the people had that encounter, that new opportunity, that open door. What did he tell Moses to do? Go and consecrate the people. Consecrate the people. I believe that God is moving us as a body of believers, right, into a place where we're going to experience God like we've never experienced him before. 
And so I believe that God is calling us to consecrate ourselves. I believe that God is calling us to enter into that place of consecration so that our hearts and minds are prepared for what he desires to, 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 to bring into our lives, but also what he desires to, to, to show us and to, to do in and through us for his glory. Amen? And so consecration is an important part of that process. What instructions were given? Consecrate the people and be ready for the third day. Isn't that interesting? Good things happen on the third day, amen? That's not, you know, that's not an accident that God uses the, you know, those time periods and different things like that. It's for real. And so the third day is an important day. But consecrate the people for the third day, right? And um, then we get into Joshua 3, 5 and 6, which says this. Then Joshua said to the people, consecrate yourselves. For tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. Again, right before there's this open door, right before this, there's this opportunity, right before they're going to have an encounter with God, Joshua, he's told, have the people consecrate themselves because I'm going to show up in a powerful way. Wow. This was right before they went over the Jordan River during flood season, right? Right, out, uh, right before they went over the Jordan River during flood season. And so that was what God was about to do. He was about to bring them into their promise. Amen? And to bring them into their promise, they had to be consecrated to the plan that he had for them. They had to be consecrated to do what God had called them to do. Because it was a scary thing for the priests to step into that water when it was rushing during flood season. Isn't that interesting too? It's interesting how God does things, right? God brings them into the promise that he has for them, not during just an ordinary day. It would, be, it would be big enough during an ordinary day, but no, he waits till flood season, right? And so here's what we're doing. Here's us. We're like, okay, is everything right? Is everything good? Is, are the conditions perfect for this to happen? And that's not God, right? This is not God. God is a God that brings us into things, and, and, and he wants to make sure that we're in over our heads. Hello? God wants to make sure that we're in over our heads because as long as our feet are touching the ground, then we can move wherever we want to move. But as soon as our feet lift off the bottom of the bed, then God's, God is directing us. God is taking us. We're in the currents of his spirit, right? And he's the one that's going to dictate where we go and how we go, right? And so God wants us to be in over our heads. And so that's why it was flood season when he did that. Did you see what he said? He said, consecrate yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. They were instructed to consecrate themselves. Now, it's interesting to me that in the first one that we looked at, it's, it, it was talking to Moses, and it said for Moses to consecrate the people. In this one with Joshua, it's saying, have the people consecrate themselves. Amen? And so, yeah, I believe that there's a, a, a balance of that and a mix of that. I believe that as you come into the house of God, that there's different things that God does when you're here that brings consecration into your lives. But there's also things that you need to do outside of here to consecrate yourself. Amen? And God will, as you pray and ask God to help you to be consecrated to Him and to His plans and purposes, He'll begin to show you things. And as He shows you things, be obedient to walk in those things. We're going to talk about that here in a minute. So what does it mean to be consecrated for increase? Consecration in the Bible means the separation of oneself from things that are unclean, especially anything that would contaminate one's relationship with a perfect God. Consecration also carries the connotation of sanctification, holiness, or purity. And when I think of consecration, man, I th that word sanctification that's included there means to be set apart, right? To be set apart. And that's a challenge to me, it's a challenge to you that we're in this world, but we're not supposed to be of this world. Amen? God says, be holy. He says, come out from them and be separate. It doesn't mean that we don't interact with people in this world. We, we have to. We're called to. It's an important aspect of our faith, of our Christianity. But in the sense of involving ourselves with the things of this world, we are called to be, come out from that and to be separate. Amen? 
what we're saying is here, the church shouldn't look like the world. And if the church is looking like the world, then something's wrong with the church. If Christians are looking like everybody else around them, then something's wrong with your faith walk. Because we're called to come out from them and to be separate, to be sanctified, to be consecrated to God and the plans and purposes that He has for our lives. So let me just challenge you with this. What are the areas of your life that look too much like the world right now? Right? That's just between you and God. There's no fingers pointing. There's no judgment. In fact, just the opposite. Here in this church, we desire to lift you up. We desire to help you. We desire to pray for you. We desire to counsel you. We desire to walk through that with you to help you to get freedom in those areas where maybe your life looks a little bit too much like the world. But if we're really going to be serious Christians and accomplish what God's called us to here in this world, we have to ask these questions. You know, my personality is I want everybody to be happy and comfortable. But God tells me that that's not what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm supposed to challenge you. I'm supposed to move you out of the place that you're in right now so that you'll come closer to Him. Amen? And, and that, that, that requires discomfort. If you're very comfortable in your Christianity, you need to start asking God to challenge you more. Because it's not that he's not challenging you. Don't get me wrong. God's challenging you. You just need to take up the challenge. Amen? When you read his word, his word will challenge you every day. I read his word, and sometimes I'm just like, oh, my goodness. Just like that, just like that love's mirror. I read that love's mirror every day, and that's what I say. Oh, man. Wow. God, help me. Every day. Every day. Just looking into that and asking God to bless us and to help us to become more like him. That's consecration. It means to be all in. To hold nothing back. The Lord spoke to me in Tuesday night prayer, which he often does. Tuesday night prayer is a a great thing to come to. He instructed me to surrender to the next level that he had planned for me. And so God's having me to look ahead. He's having me to look what God wants to do in my life in the next step that he wants me to take. And he wants me to consecrate myself to that next step. He wants me to surrender to that next step that he has planned for me. And there are different things that have to happen in order for me to enter into that next step that God has. In fact, I don't know if it was in Tuesday night prayer or if it was um, if it was back here during prayer, but God spoke to me about the genuine. I think it was back there first. God spoke to me about the genuine. He said to leave behind the counterfeit, to leave behind that which is disgenuine and to enter into the genuine. Amen. Because I believe that um, a lot of us as Christians, we've accepted a Christianity that doesn't look anything like the Bible. I think a lot of times we embrace a cultural Christianity that doesn't look anything like the Bible. And so I believe that God is calling us to go to a deeper level than that. He wants us to experience the genuine Christianity that we find in the pages of the Scripture. And so in order to do that, we need to study out the Scripture and find out what does this look like? What does this Christian life look like, right? And so as we're studying it out, we're seeing people that are on fire and committed to Jesus Christ and to the mission that he had on this earth and they're they're making sacrifices and they're giving things up to press into him and to be conformed into his image and likeness and it and Jesus himself it says that by faith in me the works that I do you shall also do and greater works than these shall you do because I go to my father now I know like uh, I, I don't know what it is I think that um We've been tricked out of that. I think that we think that that's all done now. I think that, that, that when the disciples passed away, okay, that we're in a new thing now, and, and, and that just doesn't exist anymore, but it does exist. It does exist. That lifestyle does exist. I've seen it in other people. I've seen it in their lives. And from time to time, I get a glimpse of it in my own. But I want it to be consistent in my life. And that's what I'm talking about. God, I want the genuine. I don't want the counterfeit. I want to live out my life for you. I want to see your works being done around me. I want to see people's lives being touched and changed as a result of your power flowing through me. God, I surrender myself to you. 
But really, we need to not just say it, but we need to walk it out. Amen? Because it's one thing to say, God, I surrender. We can sing it. God, I surrender my life to you. But are we really surrendered? Or are we too busy? We're talking about consecration, being all in for God. Amen? And all of us, there's not one person in here, I don't believe there's one person in here that's experienced and and pushed all the way into that. Right? We talked about it last week, the Apostle Paul. It's no longer I who live, but Christ living in me. Right? Can you imagine? That's the place that we want to come to. That's the place that God is calling us to. Is that the place that you're going? Is that the path that you're on? I challenge you to look at your life and to ask that question. He instructed me to surrender to that next level that he had. And he called me into the genuine. The enemy always has a counterfeit, but God wants us to operate in the genuine. It's not okay to settle for status quo. It's not okay to accept okay Christianity. We find the genuine again in God's word, and we need to go after that. What we see in God's word is what we should desire in our own lives. Just like that love thing that we're talking about. We need to see that manifesting in our own lives. We need to see the love of God manifesting in our own lives. Is it manifesting in your life? Is it, is it being lived out in your life? Or is there still offenses? Are there still, is there still backbiting? Is there still gossip? Is there still, or is love filling you to overflowing and changing your life? Right? It's got to be real. This gospel's got to be real to us. Or the world around us will never be changed. We need to surrender to the plan that God has for us, right? And I get it, man. There's a million things going on, right? I know as much as anybody in here how crazy life can be sometimes. But we make time for what's important. We make time for what's important. And I'm asking God to help me in this area so that I make him a priority in my life, so that I make the mission, the plan that he has for me a priority in my life, so that I don't squander my time with useless living. And when I say useless living, it doesn't have to be sin. It just has to be useless living. Useless living is just things that are temporal, things that don't last, things that have no impact on the kingdom of heaven or on eternity, right? If our lives are not a mirror of what we find in God's Word, then something's wrong with our Christian experience. When we discover this, we can choose to stay in the status quo or we can press into God and die to ourselves in order to experience the genuine. Amen? And that's a, it, 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 again, I say this over and over again, but that's a process that takes place. You don't just arrive. It's step by step by step. But are you on that path that's bringing you closer to him? Are you on that path? Have you consecrated your life? Have you given your life to grow in him? And are you taking steps towards him so that you can grow and become more like him? And so that the world around you can see who God is through you. Because let's face it, a lot of people aren't going to go to church. A lot of people aren't going to read their Bibles. And so are they seeing in your life what the pages of the Scriptures say? Are they seeing in my life what the pages of the Scripture are saying? You're going to mess up. You're going to screw up because you're not perfect. I screw up all the time. I screw up all the time. I say things I shouldn't say. I do things I shouldn't do. I don't do things I should do. There are all kinds of ways that I mess up and I screw up on a regular basis. Here's the thing. God loves me. God loves me. In in exactly where I'm at, in the state that I'm in, God loves me. But he knows that the blessing comes when we get closer to him. And so he's drawing us closer to him. He's drawing us closer to him in this walk that we have with him. And there's a consecration to die to ourselves and to live for Him every day of our lives.
And God will show us what areas need to change in order for us to go to that next place that he has for us. I can't make a law for you. The Holy Spirit needs to show it to you. I could tell you what you should do and what you shouldn't do. I could give you a whole list, but it's not going to make any difference because unless the Holy Spirit speaks it to you, you're not going to change. But as soon as the Holy Spirit, as soon as you get something from God and he speaks it to you and it gets down on the inside of your heart, man, you're excited. You're excited to give that up and to live for him and to walk with him. This is Christianity. So are you ready to give things up so that God can bless you and take you higher in your relationship with him? Have you counted the cost and are you consecrated to pay the price that is required to see God's plans for your life fully come to pass? What is God speaking to you about your life right now? Maybe as we're talking, there are different things that the Holy Spirit is lighting up in your life. And whatever those things are, we just need to be aware of. And we need to, you know, you don't try to do them in your own strength. You know that, right? That was the biggest revelation I got when I got saved and then came home and lived like the devil for seven months and then came to the end and had an encounter with God and screamed and yelled at God and said, if, you're gonna, if you want me to live a different way, you're going to have to do it because I can't do it. Hello. <laughs> Holy Spirit was like, finally. <laughs> finally. He realized that he can't do it on his own. And it's when we come to the end of ourselves and realize that we can't do it on our own that God's strength takes over. Amen. His strength is made perfect in our weakness. So we need to trust him for this process to work itself out in our lives. But we have to be willing participants. Amen? Amen. So let me see here. I'm just going to read a passage of Scripture. Then we're going to hit three points and, and close. Uh, Luke 14, 28 to 33, in relation to this process that we're talking about. Luke 14, verses 28 to 33. Suppose one of you wants to build a tower. Won't you first sit down and estimate the cost to see if you have enough money to complete it? For if you lay the foundation and are not able to finish it, everyone who sees it will ridicule you, saying, this person began to build and wasn't able to finish. That's some people that, that get saved and, and they're all excited about it. But they've never counted the cost and what they're going to face in the future. And so... When persecution comes or when hard times comes, they disappear and they give up their faith because of hard times. Have you counted the cost in following Jesus? It's not easy. It's not just, you know, all blessings and, and no, no work. It's not all blessings and, and no struggles. It's not all blessings and no challenges. In fact, you're going to be challenged more than you've ever been challenged in your entire life. Because as long as you're going with the flow, boy, that's easy. But when you turn around and go against the flow, that's going to be harder. Have you counted the cost? Verse 31, or suppose a king is about to go to war against another king. Won't he first sit down and consider whether he is able with 10,000 men to oppose the one coming against him with 20,000? If he is not able, he will send a delegation while the other is still a long way off and will ask for terms of peace. In the same way, those of you who do not give up everything you have cannot be my disciples. Jesus isn't trying to make people comfortable there, if you didn't realize that. Jesus is putting out a challenge to us. Did we get that at the end? Anybody nod off there? Verse 33, in the same way, those of you who do not give up everything you have cannot be my disciples. There's a lot of people that want to be disciples until they find out the cost. You know? <laughs> I was doing my Bible, Bible school and, and I'm reading through these classes and I'm wondering why it sounds like they're trying to talk me out of it. Seriously, in the books that I'm reading to prepare to be a pastor, it sounded like they were trying to talk me out of it. That's why. 
unless you give up everything, you cannot be my disciple. And it's not a sad thing. It's not a hard thing. When you're in love, it changes everything, amen? See, it's love is the factor that changes everything. And so it's not burdensome when you're in love. You're just ready to do it. You're excited about it. And see, that's when God brings you into your wealthy places when you completely surrender. That's when God brings you into that blessed place when you completely surrender. That's when God brings you into that place where He can prosper you and use you when you surrender. But until you get to that place of surrender, there's going to be a battle. You're going to be conflicted constantly. You know, those, those, those places where, you know, you're, you're one foot in, in the church and one foot in the world, that's the worst place in the world. Because, you, you, know, you, know, through the, you know, through what you learn in church, what you're supposed to do, and then you're out in the world doing what you're not supposed to do. You're conflicted constantly. Who wants to live a life like that? You know, but the people that are living those lives feel like they're going to lose something if they surrender. They feel like they're going to lose that, that, that fun, da-da-da, doing this and doing that. Remember, remember that? That was not fun. That was painful. <laughs> I've been there. I would not suggest or recommend that to anybody. Why would anybody want to live a life being conflicted? It's not fun. Consecration is required before we can be entrusted with increase. Did you hear what I said? God wants to bring us increase. We just, we just did all kinds of sermon series on God wants to, uh, or sermons on God wants to bring us increase, right? How God wants to bless us so we can be generous on every occasion, right? God wants to do that. That's God's will. That's God's desire. That's what He wants to do. But consecration is required before we can be entrusted with increase. Are you prepared to prosper? Are you consecrated for increase? Again, we all want to see increase in our lives, but do we understand that this increase requires higher levels of consecration? So let's just hit a few th- points here. Number one, in order for Him to bless us, we need to hear and obey what God is saying. And I don't know if you know anything about hearing and obeying, but you have to take some time to learn how to hear and obey. And then you have to take some time to get away to hear and obey. And so this is a, a, a sacrifice that you have to make. When everybody else is out doing whatever they're doing, you're spending time in God's presence, learning how to hear His voice and learning how to apply it to your life. That's part of consecration. We need to be in a position where we can hear and obey what God is saying. For example, the Lord spoke to the leadership here that there's an in-between step for us to take before we get into the building project on the property that we have, right? So there's an in-between step. We, we, man, we, people are coming up to, hey, when are you building? When are you doing this? You know, as soon as you get that land, they think, wow, bam, building. Whoop, here we go. But that's not always how God works, right? God blessed us with that property, right? He blessed us with that property, and we've been using it. But God spoke to us. There's an in-between step, okay? You have to hear and obey. As much as we want to put a beautiful building on that property, we can't rush God. He's not in a hurry. He knows that we aren't ready for that size of a project, so we need to trust Him. I talked to somebody the other day. I said, we could put a building on that property, but we'd, be, we'd outgrow it before we moved into it with the money that we have. So that it's not time for us to do that, right? Yeah. Exodus 23, 29 and 30 says this. But I will, this is, this is the Israelites. Uh, uh, God's talking about bringing them into the promised land, right? So God promised them this land. He's already promised them this land. And here's what he says, but I will not drive them out, the enemies that are in the land, I will not drive them out in a single year because the land would become desolate and the wild animals too numerous for you. Listen to this, little by little, I will drive them out before you until you have increased enough to take possession of the land. (laughs) 
Jesus. God is good. God knows better than we do. We want to rush. We want to get there. We're all about the destination. God's about the journey. There's a process that we need to walk through for God to prosper us. God is as equally interested, as I said before, in the journey as He is in the destination. You see, I was in grad school when I got, well, I, I got saved, and then I, no, I was in grad school because I took some grad classes, then I went to basic training, got saved, then I came back and started grad school again. And so I was in grad school um, when I got saved, and I was going for teaching at the time, and um, I found out that I have a purpose in life, and that it's all about ministry, it's all about the kingdom, it's all about God. So what do I need to be here for? What do I need to stay in this school for? It's time to go. It's time to do what God's called me to do. I mean, I got a plan, I got a purpose. You. Let's go. And God said, no, you're not ready. God said, you become a teacher. And it's through these years of being a teacher that God has trained me and taught me. I could have rushed out and jumped in right away, but it wasn't God's plan. I would have missed God if I would have done that. It was God's plan, but it wasn't God's timing. Exactly. Oftentimes, there are things that we want that we aren't yet ready for. What you desire is probably part of God's plan, but we have to discern, discern His perfect timing in that plan. Again, I wanted to go in ministry back in graduate school, but listen, since I became a Christian, I've been involved in ministry but it wasn't until I was 46 years old that God said, okay, he's ready to step out and, and, and start this work that I have for him. 46 years old. Remember, I, I, I think I've shared with you before that Jason Jablonski, he was up at Chapel on the Hill ministering, and I went up to get prayer from my back, and I'm, you know, okay, yeah, okay, this is good, it's feeling better, yeah. And he said, stand up, and I stood up, and he looked at me, and he said, God has a word for you. And I said, okay. He said, God wants you to know you're not too old for what he's calling you into. He knew nothing about, he knew nothing about, you know, us launching a church or anything like that. That was before, you know, Pastor Chris knew it. He didn't know anything about it. He said, you're not too old. See, I needed to hear that. I, I needed to hear that that was God's timing, that that was God's plan, and that now's the time to step out. Don't get ahead of God. We have to learn to enjoy the journey. So, question, are there any areas in your life, whether it's school, work, relationships, business opportunities, ministry opportunities, home purchases, financial decisions, where maybe you've been tempted to get out ahead of God instead of hearing and obeying what the Lord is saying, right? Think about that. Are there any areas in your life right now where you're tempted to step out ahead of God and to do something without God's blessing on it in the time and season that you're in. Abraham, Abram and Sarai had a promise from God, but got in a hurry and caused a lot of pain for a lot of people. They took things into their own hands and tried to figure out on their themselves because they didn't understand why it was taking so long. And so they decided to help it out a little bit. God's promise is fine on its own. It, doesn't, it, it needs our help in the sense of our agreement, but it doesn't need us to step out in the flesh to accomplish it. And as soon as you step out of the, f out of the spirit and into the flesh to accomplish God's plans and purposes, you will fail. Worse yet, you'll succeed. And it won't be God. And your heart will be drawn away and enticed by the things of this world. Be patient. Hear God's voice. Discern God's timing. Walk out His plans for your life one step at a time. Number two, in order for Him to bless us, we need to shut any doors that we have open to the enemy. The enemy hates us, as we well know. Anytime God desires to bless and promote us, the enemy will be there to resist us. 
Don't be surprised by the resistance. Don't be surprised by the resistance when you start stepping out God's plans for your life. Don't be surprised by the resistance. Don't be afraid of it either because God is greater. Amen? So we don't, wanna, we, don't, we don't want to be surprised about it. No, when we're doing what's right in God's sight, there's going to be some kickback. There's going to be some resistance. We need to understand that. And we need to know that God is greater than the resistance that's coming against us. And if we'll just continue to trust him and step by step, God's going to bring us through it to the other side. And when we get to the other side, we're going to be stronger than when we went in. Amen? That's a process that works out itself out in our lives. Be alert, 1 Peter 5, 8 says, and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. He's there to stop the plans of God for your life, right? And we know that it goes on to say, resist him, resist him, resist him. And the Bible tells us that when we resist the devil, he must flee. And so we need to understand these things as we walk into God's blessing. I'm telling you, 2022 is the year of God's blessing. It's the year of increase. I, I've seen it. I mean, Al sends me something every, every week, at least once a week, right, Al, of, of prophetic words of talking about the exact same things that we're talking about here, you know, but it's in a little bit different way. One's talking about it's the year of the open hand. The other one's, you know, t- there's all kinds of different ways that it's being that it's being put out there, but God's speaking the same thing to His people. Amen? 2022 is the year of the open door. It's the year of the open hand. It's the year of increase. God wants to bless you and increase you. Why? Because I believe that there's a great revival coming, and I believe that He wants to provide for His people to be ready for that revival as it comes, to be ready for that great impouring of souls into the kingdom of heaven so that you can be a part of that and you can be generous on every occasion. Amen? This is what God is doing. As the Lord looks to prosper us in 2022, we cannot give the enemy any ammunition to take us out. We need to resist him, not assist him. So are there any open doors in your life that God has been encouraging you to shut? Remember, we talked earlier about any areas in your life that look more like the world than Jesus. I would consider that an open door in your life. You need to shut that open door. How do you shut it? You repent of that sin that's in your life. You repent of living in that lifestyle. You turn away from it. You ask God to give you the strength to be free from it. And every time it comes, you take it captive and you cast it down. Every time that thought comes, you take it captive, you cast it down. You don't wait. You don't meditate on it for a while. You don't see where it might take. No, you take it captive, you cast it down. You be, you be violent towards everything that's contrary to God's plan for your life. Did you hear what I said? You have to be violent towards everything that's contrary to God's plan for your life. If you're not, you're going to get taken down. This is the year of open doors. Shut those doors that the enemy has opened in your life so that God can open doors before you. God wants to bless you in 2022. Consecrate yourselves for increase. Amen? Number three, when God blesses us, we need to understand the source and the purpose. The source and the purpose of that blessing and not forget it. Keep our, ourselves fixed on that and understand that. Never lose sight of the source and purpose of that blessing. In Deuteronomy 8, God gives the people instructions for entering in and taking possession of the land. Starting in verse 10, it says, When you have eaten and are satisfied, praise the Lord, your God, for the good land He has given you. Be careful that you do not forget the Lord, your God, failing to observe His commandments, His laws, His decrees that I am giving you this day. Amen? Stay focused on the source of your blessing. Don't lose sight that it is God who blesses you. Notice how God is giving us a warning as well. Be careful, right? What are we being careful about? That you don't forget the Lord. So as God blesses us in 2022, make sure that you keep focused on and you understand properly that it's God that is blessing you. Amen? You can't lose sight of that. 
Deuteronomy 12, 8, 12 through 16. Otherwise, when you eat and are satisfied, listen to this. This is awesome. When you build fine houses. So is there anything wrong with fine houses in God's eyes? No. When you build fine houses, he says, I'm going to bless you. You're going to build fine. That's fine. Build fine houses. Who cares? God's blessed you, right? Build fine houses and settle down. When your herds and flocks grow large and your silver and gold increase, there's not saying that there's anything wrong with that. God's the author of that. And all you have is multiplied. Why? Because God's blessing you. This is the danger, 14. Then your heart will become proud and you will forget the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. He led you through the vast and dreadful wilderness and the thirsty and waterless land with its venomous snakes and scorpions. He brought you water out of a rock. He gave you manna to eat in the wilderness, something your ancestors have never known, to humble you and test you so that in the end it might go well with you. Glory to God. Stay humble. Always giving praise to God for the blessings in your life. Remember His faithfulness through the tough times, right? Remember that faithfulness that He showed you through the tough times. Those are testimonies of God's faithfulness. Share them often. Remember them. Don't forget how God has been faithful to you in past times. Why? Because if He was faithful then, He's faithful now and forevermore. Remember the testimonies of God's faithfulness. Stir them up on the inside of you. Why does God say that He humbles us and tests us? He says that He humbles us and tests us for a reason. Why is it that He humbles us and tests us? He humbles us and tests us so that it might go well with us in the end. Now, when you're saying humbles and tests us, it's not talking about you know, all kinds of devils. It's not talking about diseases. It's not talking about all of these things like that people take and put into that interpretation. God's not, he's not a child abuser. He doesn't hate you. No, he disciplines those he loves. Like a father, a good father disciplines his children. God disciplines those he loves. And we go through some things, but he's with us the entire time. He's protecting us. He's safeguarding us as we walk through those things. Yes, it might be tough, but as, just like I was talking with somebody, resistance brings strength, Amen. And so if you don't have any resistance, you don't have any reason to apply your faith to it. But when resistance comes, we apply our faith to that thing. And when we apply our faith to that thing, it's just like lifting weights, right? When re resistance is applied, right, you push back, you push back, you push back, you push back. And as you push back, strength is realized. The same thing with our faith. When things come against us, we apply our faith. We apply our faith. We apply our faith to it, and our faith grows and gets strong. And our faith is what pleases God and what brings us the victory. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. This is what God is calling us into. Humble ourselves. Know that God's blessings, know that the blessings that we have in our lives come from God. Acknowledge Him. Stir up the times that He's been faithful in your life and keep walking forward. God tests us, He humbles us and tests us so that it might go well with us. There will always be some character training along the way. But every test is meant to strengthen us, build our faith, and position us to prosper. I'm going to just end with 17 and 18 here. Deuteronomy 8, 17 and 18. You may say to yourself, my power and the strength of my hands have produced this wealth for me. That's dangerous. My power and the strength of my hands have produced this wealth for me. But remember the Lord your God. Listen to this. For it is He who gives you the ability to produce wealth. So, and so confirms His covenant, which He swore to your ancestors as it is today. It's God who gives you the ability to get wealth. Amen? It's God who gives you the ability to produce wealth. Why? So He might establish His covenant. Don't you dare start to think that you had anything to do with it. That's why when we're talking about this church, my confession, my declarations over this church, right, is it's not by might nor by power, but it's by His Spirit. Amen? Unless God builds the house, the laborers labor in vain who build it. Right? Faithful is He who calls me, and He is doing it. Right? He's doing it. Not me. He's doing it. So any blessings, any things that happen in this church, anything that happens in this church that's good, it's because of God, not because of man. God 
God gives us the ability to produce wealth. God is the one who blesses us and increases. Why? He blesses us, it says, to confirm his covenant with us and with the world around us. Amen? Every promise that has ever been promised finds its yes in Christ. We are under the new covenant that is filled with endless promises and blessings from the Lord. He blesses us so that we can be a blessing to those around us. And he blesses us to confirm his covenant again in our lives and in the lives of the people around us. Last verse, I guess I'll hit 19. If you ever forget the Lord your God and follow other gods and worship and bow down to them, I testify against you today that you will surely be destroyed. Why? Because you're stepping out from under that covering, right? You're denying God's hand and blessing in your life. And you're saying, I've done this thing. You're entering into a spirit of pride, and that opens up doors to the enemy, and you will be destroyed. God is merciful, and if you cry out to him, he will rescue you. Amen? We cannot put other things in God's place. We cannot prioritize things above him in our lives. Anytime we exalt other people, activities, desires above that of God, we are worshiping false gods. We've made those things to be God's because we've given them first place in our lives, and that's God's place. God is calling us to consecrate ourselves for the increase that he desires to bring into our lives. So we need to what? Hear and obey what God is speaking to our hearts. We need to shut every door and consecrate ourselves to pay the price to fulfill God's plan. And we need to constantly keep in focus the source and purpose of God's blessing in our lives, which is God himself. Amen? Father, we just come to you right now. We ask you for your blessing to be upon us. God, we know according to the scripture that you desire to open up the windows of heaven and pour out such an abundant blessing upon us that we don't have room to contain it. We know that you desire us to be so blessed that we can be generous on every occasion. We know that you desire for us to prosper, Lord God. Oh, God, but we also understand that there's a price to entering into the prosperity that you have for us. And, God, we pray, Lord God, that you would help us to pay that price, to enter into that place, Lord God, where we would honor you and glorify you with our lives and with everything that you bless us with, that you might establish your covenant in our lives and in the lives of the people around us. God, we give you all the praise and honor and glory for how good you are. Amen. Has anybody received open doors this year in 2022? Has anybody seen God's goodness and faithfulness? Has anybody seen God move in your life? Amen. Is anybody happy and excited about what God is doing? Amen. <laughs> Woo! Jesus. Father, we can't wait to see what you're about to do. We thank you for everything you've done. We give you all the credit for the blessings in our lives. And we can't wait to see what you have in store. So, God, we surrender ourselves to you and ask you to have your way in each of our lives. Bless your people, Lord God. Bless your people with eyes to walk out this message of consecration in their lives. Hallelujah. Maybe you're here today and you're ready to take the next step that God has planned for your life. Maybe there's something that he spoke to you even during the service. Whatever the need is that you have in your life today, I'd just like to invite you to come up here and get some prayer. Amen? So if that's you and you want prayer, let's have our uh, ministry team come on up. Uh, not next week, but the following week, we're going to do communion too. I just wanted to let you know that. We're going to do communion not, this, not next Sunday, but the following Sunday. Amen? So again, if you have any prayer requests, if you need somebody to stand with you in faith, for you to break through whatever the enemy has placed in your path and enter into the fullness of what God has for you. I just want to invite you to come up here now as we sing this last song. Let's stand and worship together.